This is the new DJI L3 LiDAR sensor on the Matrice 400 RTK. Let's fly! So this is DJI's brand new Zenmuse L3 LiDAR sensor. It packs a massive 1,535 nanometer Livox LiDAR sensor with 200 megapixel cameras. This is the first time DJI is releasing a long range LiDAR sensor capable of achieving up to 950 meters of range. Having longer wavelengths with the L3 compared to the L2 is gonna allow us to have better penetration in vegetated areas and reduce the amount of noise we see with later returns. And while the L2 gives us an incredible five returns, the L3 is now capable of giving us 16 returns. And in terms of survey accuracy, DJI claims that we can get up to three centimeters of accuracy in the horizontal and four centimeters in the vertical. And today we're gonna to be putting that to the test and seeing the accuracy of the L3 LiDAR sensor. This right here is DJI's DRTK3 GNSS receiver. It supports L1, L2, and L5 bands, has over 1,400 channels, provides tilt compensation up to 60 degrees, and this receiver can be used as both a base or a rover, depending on the type of survey data you're collecting. So we're gonna start by using this receiver as a rover. This is gonna allow us to collect ground control points and checkpoints on site to ensure the accuracy and integrity of our data. So this is an area view of the area that we're going to be flying our M400. The idea is that we're going to have five control points, one at the most extreme points that we can get to, and then one in the center of the site. Having this control network along with RTK on our drone is going to ensure that we have the most accurate data. So I'm going to start by setting the first point here. So I don't even think I need the hammer. I could just push them right in. All right, so we're going to turn on our receiver. So I'm going to be using the DJI Enterprise app. And at the top here, I'm going to select DRTK3 rover station. Next, we'll select connect device and it's going to be looking for my receiver. There it is, we'll say connect and there's our device. So if I click on this, I can see my entry credentials. I'll hit confirm and we're just gonna wait for a fixed reading. There it is. So now we can hold this point and we're going to add this point. So it's going to measure and there we go. We now have our first point measured. So now let's go and set the next four points. All right, here we are. We're at point number two. We've got a fixed reading. My God, look how incredible that view is. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add a point. Okay, perfect. Point number two has been added and now let's head over to point number three. Okay, and this one is going to be point number three. All right, there we go. Point number three added. Let's do point number four. One more point, point number five. All right, and we're going to add the points. All right, there we go. Point has been added. And so if we take a look here, we can see all five of our points that have been added. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add some additional points as checkpoints so that we can use these ones as ground control and then verify our vertical elevations using those checkpoints. All right, so now we're gonna put away the DRTK3 GNSS receiver and it's time for us to pull out the new DJI M400 RTK with the L3 LiDAR sensor. Now that we've set up our M400 with our L3, it's time to plan our mission. All right, so I've got the DJI Pilot app here and I'm going to enter the camera view. Inside of the camera view, I can actually see the live view of the 200 megapixel cameras. I can tilt down, I can tilt up, I can even tilt to the right, to the left. So I have full control of these cameras on the L3. I can also click on point cloud here we have a single color. I can switch it over to our intensity. This is our colorized point cloud and a elevation visualization of the point cloud. I'm gonna just keep this uncolorized. We also have our POV camera as well as our aerial map that we can plan our mission with. So this polygon here is the site that we want to fly. 
So I'm gonna click on routes, and I'm going to add a new route, and we're going to be doing an area route. So now I can specify the points in which I want to survey. So I'm gonna survey from here, to here, to here, down to the bottom and over to the end. And I can make minor adjustments just like that. Now I'm going to select the aircraft model. We are using an M400, the sensor model, the L3. And then if I don't want to do LiDAR, I just want to use the camera sensors on the LiDAR sensor, I can just switch over to photogrammetry. But I do want to use the LiDAR sensor, so I'm going to keep it at LiDAR. And I'm going to go to payload settings. Now the first one is the returns. You can see we have single, dual, quad return, we have eight returns, and then 16 returns. So we'll set this to 16 returns. We then have the sampling rate, which we're just gonna keep this at 350 kilohertz. We then have the scanning mode, and this is going to be repetitive, star-shaped or non-repetitive. Star-shape is just going to change the pattern in which we are collecting data. And then the photo resolution, you can do either a 6K or 12K. We're gonna use 12K because that is the maximum resolution for these cameras. Okay, and we do wanna have RGB coloring. So all this looks good, I'm gonna say okay. All right, and so now I can select either ortho collection or oblique collection. An oblique collection would basically do multiple paths. So it wouldn't just be a single back and forth, it would be back and forth, and then a different direction back and forth. We could set our ground sampling distance to determine what our height should be, or we can set our own height. So here it says root altitude, I'm going to set this to 100 meters above ground level. And I'm actually going to adjust the altitude mode to AGL, which will actually allow us to use terrain follow. So when we get up to the area where the terrain is much higher, the drone will automatically increase its altitude to maintain the same resolution to the ground. Now down here, I've got a message that says it is recommended to set the camera resolution to 6K at the current flight altitude. It's probably because we don't need 12K resolution photos. The reality is if you're flying at a much higher altitude, that's when a 12K camera might be useful. But at 100 meters above ground level, we could stick to just 6K. So the nice thing is all I have to do is click adjust and it's automatically gonna update for me. I don't have to go back into the settings to do that. We're gonna do an IMU calibration to ensure that our IMU is working. And yeah, everything else here looks to be pretty good. Some additional settings that we can look at are the side lap and overlap of the LiDAR sensor. So we'll keep that at 40%. I'm gonna set the photo mode to distance interval and everything else I'm gonna leave just the way it is. And we're gonna name our project L3 test. All right, so this all looks good. I'm gonna save our project. And while I am a drone pilot in the US, I'm actually in Germany right now, so I actually cannot legally fly a drone. And that's why I brought my friend Martin here to help us out. Hi guys, my name is Martin Krull. I'm a surveying engineer in Germany from the company uh, Vermessung 3D, and that is basically in English, uh, surveying 3D. So we are doing uh, surveying services and uh, also help other people uh, to start into uh, drone surveying for several years now. Today we are doing a VLOS flight. That means uh, we keep the visual line of sight distance and and uh, we will keep the uh, drone into my site as a pilot, waiting for the BV loss allowance uh, here in Germany. All right, Martin, tell me, did I do a good job setting up the mission? <laughs> yeah, I think you did it quite properly. And I will check um, all the other uh, specifications about the setting up here. Also, the obstacle avoidance is is active and we even have, of course, what is very important. We have RTK and an RTK fix here. Yes, that's good. OK, let's go. Yeah, let's do it.
All right, now that we've finished flying the L3, let's pack everything up and head back to the office so that we can process all this data and see our results. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at all of the processed data inside of DJI Terra. Here we have the point cloud that is being visualized using the RGB values. We also have the intensity mode, which shows us the reflectivity of each of these points. We also have the height visualization, which shows us blue as the low points and red as the high points, majority of those being treetops. We can also see the trajectory visualization and we can see the type of points. So those that are orange are the ground points and the white ones are non-classified points. We can toggle off the non-classified points and you can see just how dense the ground points are thanks to the 16 returns that come from the L3. Go on and toggle this back on. And what I want to do now is take several profiles of the point cloud to show the ground points versus the non-classified points. So we'll go ahead and take a profile right here, and then I'm going to change the profile width to 0.50. All right. And then if we zoom in here, you can see again in orange, we have the actual ground and we can actually distinguish these points very clearly on the ground versus the points that we collected from the trees. We'll go ahead and take another profile here. And again, same thing. We're able to see the ground very very clearly and it's really amazing to see the variation in elevation and how we can get that down to a centimeter level of accuracy with an extreme amount of precision traditional surveying would have required us to spend weeks if not months out in the field and we wouldn't have been able to get this level of precision because our dem grid would probably be a few meters uh, whereas you're getting points here that are centimeters apart thanks to using uav lidar now in the field i did say we were going to use five ground control points and then we were going to collect several checkpoints and what we've actually decided to do is use just one ground control point to ensure that our elevation is matching between the drone and the control points on the GNSS receiver and the remaining eight points that we collected will be checkpoints and what we'll do is we'll actually check the vertical difference between all of the checkpoints versus the ground points on the point cloud so if you take a look here you can see all of these marks are where checkpoints were taken and this point right here in the middle is the only ground control point that we set and I'm gonna run a profile through this checkpoint that's actually underneath a decent amount of trees and taking a look here we can actually see this point is hitting right on the ground so visually speaking these checkpoints are hitting the point cloud and they seem to be matching vertically now in just a second here i'm going to show you the quality report so you can see the vertical difference between all of the checkpoints but before i show you that i want to look at the 2d ortho map that was generated using those 100 megapixel cameras and zooming in here we can just see an insane amount of resolution in these images and you have to remember, we flew this at 100 meters above ground level. So if you were using any of the older LiDAR sensors that had the 20 megapixel cameras, you would definitely need to be flying a lot lower and slower to be able to achieve this level of resolution. But flying at 100 meters above ground level with 100 megapixel cameras, we were able to achieve one centimeter per pixel resolution. So overall, this data set looks incredible. I love the way that it turned out. And so now let's take a look at the quality report and see just how accurate this point cloud out of the L3 is compared to the DRTK3 GNSS receiver. Okay, here we go. We can take a look and see all of the parameters that we set for DJI Terra. We can also see the payload Zenmuse L3. And coming down here to the point cloud control point error, you can see we've got one ground control point. And obviously there's little to no error here because we fixed everything vertically to that one point. But going slightly up here to the eight checkpoints, we can see here that we've got an average difference of about two to three centimeters vertically on all of the checkpoints. And you saw those checkpoints were pretty spread out in the site. So to be able to achieve this level of accuracy on a site that has a lot of vegetation is just so incredible to see. Special thanks to DGI Enterprise for sponsoring today's video. Also a huge shout out to Martin from Vermesam Freidi for being our surveyor and drone pilot over in Germany. Without you, we would definitely not have been able to do this project. If you guys like this type of content about drone mapping and surveying, then definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you're looking to learn more and improve your skills in surveying, then visit thesurveyschool.com. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.